Right, hello Year 10. So, um, just to welcome you back and get you thinking about what we've been doing so far, um, the first thing in assignments is this. It's a crossword and it covers some of what we should already know about waves. So, what you would need to do is print off a copy of this and fill it in, or you can just try and fill it in online if you want. Um, that'll probably take you about 10 to 15 minutes to actually do that. So. Can you pause the video and do that now, please? Give it a shot, and then I'll come back with the answers in a few minutes. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at um, first ultrasounds. Now, we did touch on this very briefly last um, term, but we're just going to sort of focus on this a bit more. So, um, very quickly, we did about refraction and reflection. And we know that when a wave hits a surface, they reflect like this. So here, we've got a wave coming in, could be a wave of light, could be a wave of sound, whatever. It hits a hard surface and bounces off it. However, sometimes a wave, some of the wave's energy can also be refracted through it. So remember, we get that slight bending effect, okay? So, a sound wave is like any other kind of wave. It will reflect and it will refract. So, ultrasound is any sound which is above 20,000 hertz. And basically it means it's too high for us to hear. So, the definition of an ultrasound is anything which is above 20,000 hertz. So, we can actually use ultrasound in several different ways, okay? So, Firstly, you need to make sure you've got a definition of what ultrasound is. So actually, we'll just, uh, first thing we actually need to do is write that in. So, ultrasound is any sound wave higher than 20,000 hertz. Okay, and that basically means it's too high for humans to hear. Okay. So it could be a really, really, really loud sound, you know, but we wouldn't actually be able to hear it because the frequency is too high. Okay, so that's the definition of ultrasound. So make sure you've got that in your book, please. Then the first thing I'd like to do once uh, after this is pause this video and go into the two YouTube links which are placed in assignments and watch those. Okay, and then I'm going to come back to you with a couple of examples of how we actually use ultrasound. Okay, so pause the video and do that now, please. So, welcome back. So, for your next task, you're going to be pausing the video again in a moment. Um, I'd like to use your purple physics revision guides, and you're going to need page 89. Uh, now, once again, I'll snap a picture of this and upload it onto the post, just in case you don't have that. Okay, um, you should be able to zoom in and see. Pay particular attention to the bit in the green box. So I'm looking for you to make a few notes. Now you can do this as you want. Um, you could do it as a spider diagram, or you could do it as bullet points. So I'm looking for between 10 to 12 notes. I would say try and focus on the key things. So those are identified with, uh, if they're underlined or they're in bold. Okay, those would be some of your key identifying points. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go through this example with you in just a moment. So it probably take you about another 10 minutes or so to make your notes from page 89 in your physics revision guide. Pay particular attention to the bit in the green box, okay? And I'll explain why in just a moment because we're gonna use that as an example. And then we'll use the example of the submarine as well in a few minutes. Okay, so off you go. Okay, so as well as the very obvious prenatal scanning, which is basically looking at how a baby is developing inside a uterus. That's the sort of proper name for it. We can also, also use ultrasounds to scan for flaws in industrial uh, materials. Okay. Now the way this works is, say for example, you had a metal girder and for whatever reason, a crack had appeared in it. What we can do is we can test the metal before we put it into a building or wherever to make sure it's not got any of these flaws. And the way we do that is you'd have an ultrasound transmitter and a detector. Now it sends out high frequency sound waves 
and certain what we do is we can work out exactly where the crack is okay because we know or we can work out how quickly the sound moves through different materials and then once we know the distance uh, sorry once we know the speed of it and how long it takes from a sound wave to bounce from there and then back up to the detector we can work out what the distance is essentially where the crack is okay so you can see here the sound wave pulse is being sent out from here and you can see that's picked up by the detector here and you can also see that some of the sound waves hit the crack and remember whenever you get a change in density you get a partial reflection okay so you get refraction but you also get partial reflection and it's this partial reflection that the detector picks up and you can see it's only a partial reflection so the detector picks up a smaller signal that's the initial signal coming from there and that's the reflected signal coming back and you can see it's smaller because some of the sound waves will have been refracted but only a, some of it will have been reflected okay so it's very important that you identify what that is that is a partial reflection so it's a smaller signal because not all of the sound wave is reflected remember that and because we know the speed of the sound through different materials and because we know how long it took from the sound wave to go from there to there we've got speed and we've got time we can work out the distance okay and i'll show you how this works with an example of a submarine okay so let's just say we had a ship that was trying to track a submarine okay so we know that uh sound can travel through water okay just like sound can travel okay so sound uh travels faster in water than it does in air because water is denser so just to give you a little bit of information sound travels at 1000 480 but we're just going to round up and say sound travels at 1500 meters per second in water it's actually slightly slower it's 1480 but we're not going to worry we need a nice round number for this demonstration so that is the speed of sound in water now let's just say um our ship is trying to find our submarine it sends out a signal it hits the submarine and bounces back so can this ship work out how deep the submarine is? Okay, well, let's think about what we need to know. Let's just say it took four seconds for that to come back. Okay, four seconds. The way we would work this out is very simple. Okay, the distance is speed and time okay so speed distance and time now you've come across this equation before um again technically that should be a v for velocity but again i'm just rushing this so it's okay so in this case it took four seconds and it was traveling at 1500 meters per second so can we work out how far the submarine is or fact how far away the submarine is how deep it is so yes we've got the speed and we've got the time so it's very simple we simply multiply these together okay so 1500 times 4 gives us a distance of oops, uh, 6 thousand meters if the submarine according to this is 6 thousand meters deep. why is that wrong okay why is that wrong right so the very simple reason is it took four seconds for the signal to go from there hit the submarine and bounce back so what would we need to do in order to get the correct position we need to divide that final answer by two because that is the speed in water but divided by the total time but how far away it is is just half the distance 
steps, okay? So it took two seconds to get down, two seconds to get back. So actually, the time it took that sound wave to hit the submarine was only two seconds. So in fact, our submarine is only 3,000 meters deep, okay? So what I'd like to do, to quickly pause the video now, copy up this diagram, use this as the equation, and explain how we worked out the depth of the submarine, okay? So how would the ship work out the depth of the submarine using this simple equation? Okay, so pause the video and do that now, please. Okay, welcome back. So, um, ultrasounds, as we said, can be used for medical imaging, prenatal scanning, uh, industrial imaging, so finding flaws in materials, and also echo sounding, um, basically echolocation. Okay, so what I would like to think about now is we can use a very similar technique um, using earthquake waves. Okay, now earthquakes happen um, when large parts of the earth crust and upper mantle move suddenly. It's very difficult to predict exactly when and where earthquakes will happen, even when a lot of data is available. So. Earthquakes produce shock waves called seismic waves, and there are two types. There are things called P waves, and there are things called S waves. Now, I'm going to talk you through this uh, properly next lesson, okay? What I would like you to do, the final task today, is I would like you to sketch out uh, something like this in your book with labels like this. So. This is the structure of the Earth, and you've got the outermost layer, the crust, followed by this rather thick layer, the mantle, which is kind of a semi-solid, it's quite a thick solid, possibly partially melted material. Then you've got the outer core here, which is liquid, and then the inner core, which is solid. Now, we are pretty confident that we know uh, the structure of the earth and that it's made in this way, it's arranged in this way. How on earth could we possibly know that, given that we've only drilled 20 kilometers down into the crust? And the crust in places is over 100 kilometers thick. So we've only gone a fifth of the way through this outermost layer and yet we can say with a great deal of confidence that this is how the earth is structured so how has science led us to believe this okay so next lesson we are going to investigate how we have identified this okay how we've identified that um the earth structure is laid out in this way so the final task today what i would like you to do is draw something like this in your book. If you want to log onto the internet and find your own version, um, it's fairly straightforward, or you can use a flat face on version, but you need to identify the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core, okay? Um, I'd like to add a couple of little things. The crust is solid, the mantle is partially solid, outer core is liquid, and the inner core is solid. Um, and maybe do a quick five minute search online, see if you can find out anything else very briefly about the structure of those layers. OK, and then we're going to see how we use these seismic waves to come to this conclusion about the structured layer of the Earth. OK, how do we draw these kind of conclusions? OK, so um, let's just go through today. So what you needed to do was the crossword, which you will be. Uh, hopefully uploading and I'll go through the answers for that uh, next lesson okay then um, it's probably a good idea to have a diagram like this you then need to make your notes from page 89 in your revision guide so I'm looking for between 10 and 12 key points and then finally your diagram oh sorry not finally sorry then your diagram of how sonar works with this example and then finally, your diagram of the Earth. Those are what 
uh, you need to be producing for today, please. Okay. Uh, right. So good luck. And if there are any problems, I will be online to answer your questions as always.